Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'll be showing you how you can shuffle a deck of 52 playing cards just by using a DS list. It's very simple. So when I put my mouse onto the shuffle button, it shuffles. When I take it off, there we go, that's what we got. That's a new shuffle, just like that, see? Very, very simple. If you don't know what a DS list is, then I suggest you check out my Shopping List Simulator 2014 in-depth guide to DS lists for uh, a greater understanding of what it is. But in this row, I'm just going to be using one to shuffle them. So let's jump straight into the project file, and I'm going to show you how this works. So here we go in sprites. I've got sprite cards, pretty much 52 sub-images of all the cards. If we go over here, check them out. There they are. It was a sprite sheet that I cut out. There it's got all the cards that we need for whatever game we're using. So if we go over here, notice that there are 52 sub-images. Each one corresponds to a value here which is our image index. Check that out. So basically, if we create a DS list and give it 52 integers from 0 to 51, and then we cycle through these and give these digits to separate instances of an object called object card, then we can tell it to draw that particular image index of sprite cards. So, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a, an object called object button shuffle. Uh, oh right, also there's this shuffle button. Yeah, it's got two sub-images, depending on whether the mouse is on it or not. Give that over there, add an event, create event over here. Uh, I just want this to be in the center of the room. Mm, 600 should be fine. And also image speed equals zero. We don't want that flicking through uncontrollably. Then in our step event, drag in some code. Here we need to make sure that it detects when the mouse is over it. Self. And if it is, image index equals one. If it isn't, image index equals 2. Also, another cool thing here is I'm going to set global.shuffle equals true. Global.shuffle equals false over here. This is actually supposed to be 0, sorry. Yeah, so if the mouse is on it, it's going to change to image index 1, which is that one. And if the mouse is off it, it's going to be this one. And if the mouse is on it, that means we can shuffle those cards. Looks all dramatic. You can also just uh, put this shuffle code into the click so when it's you know when it's when this button is clicked then global.shuffle equals true. Uh, either way is fine depending on what kind of thing you're looking for. Okay. So that's set up. Let's create a card. Object card. Give it sprite cards. That's its uh, sprite index. Create event. I'm going to set image speed equals zero. Because it's set to this pretty much this array of a whole lot of different sprites. We want to make sure that it doesn't cycle through them dramatically. Right there. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to create a controller. That's only going to do stuff if that variable, this one, global.shuffle equals true. Okay, so create, drag in some code. Firstly, we want to say global.shuffle equals false when we start. We don't want it uh, shuffling yet. And here we're going to create the DS list. I'm going to call it deck equals DS list create, just like that. And now we're going to initialize the list. I'm just going to use a for loop to give it uh, variables between, uh, well, numbers between 0 and 51. So for var i equals 0, i is, sorry, i is less than 52, i plus plus. And here we say ds list add. What do we want to add to the bottom? You see, it says ID. I think one of these is to increase it. There we go. ID is deck. And we want to put I right in there. So the first one will be put in, that'll put a zero. The second place will be a one, etc. <laughs> then, simply, all we do is call this DS list. Oops, shuffle. Check that out. And we say which list of one shuffle? Shuffle deck. As simple as that. And we've shuffled pretty much all those digits around.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strategically lay out all the cards onto our background so that it looks fun and at the same time what we're doing is we're assigning to every instance of object card we're assigning the number that's now here stored over there in this DS list and that will then draw a certain sub image depending on the number so if it's the fourth element in this DS list and the number seven we'll see the eight of clubs it's just like that Okay, so we're going to do that over here. We're going to initialize some variables that we'll use. Uh, basically, I'm going to be drawing them out in a grid kind of thing. So I've got a width of 13. Uh, this is actually supposed to be width. There we go. A height of 4. So that's 13 cards across and 4 down. Then we've got xx equals to 150. This is pretty much the first position of the first card. 100. This is for display purposes, pretty much. Position equals 0. So that's for the first card. Then I'm going to use a for loop. Well, it's going to be two for loops. So the first one's going to be var j equals zero j's less than width. Uh, j plus plus. Scroll down a bit. Okay, let's open these. Oops, let's open these up. And we're going to have our second for loop over here. So it's a nested for loop. Var k equals zero. K is less than height k plus plus alright so this is where the good part comes in so I'm going to create a terrible variable m I'm going to set it to the instance create of at this position x x y y so the first one we put at 150 100 and I'm going to make an instance of object card whoops card Okay, so when it creates that instance, it's going to store its ID right here in M, so that we can, you know, throw some stuff into that when it's created, which is what we're going to do over here. M dot image index. There we go. Equals ds list find value. Put it over here. Value of which uh, ds list? Well, deck. That's the one we created over there. That's what we want. Deck, and then here we say position. Okay, so because this is the first card, which is actually zero, it's going to get the zero element, which is the very first element of deck, and it's going to grab that number, which is a number between zero and fifty-one, and it's going to store it right here as the image index. And then when the card is created and shown to the user, if, for example, like I said, it was, let's go to twelve, then it's going to be the king of clubs. And we're going to see the king of clubs, just like that. Pretty cool. So let's carry on over here. We've done the image index. We need to now increment y y because we're moving uh, down because it's height. So for every width it does four down. Is it right? Yeah. For every width of one it does four down. Okay. So y y uh, plus equals one hundred. I think that's good spacing. Okay. Then we're going to say position. Let's copy this. Plus plus. So now when it runs the next height, so of the first width, it, the, you know, the second card down, it's going to be position of 1, it's going to grab the position index at 1 of this deck, and going to shove that digit into the image index of card at M, which M is the instance ID of an object card that was created right here at line 21. Right, then we're going to close this off, right over there. And then over here, we need to set YY back to 100, because it's moving now one to the right. It's done the first column. Now it's doing the second column. It's going to keep doing that all the way up until 13 columns have been done. In this case, we need to increment the XX, because we're moving to the right, plus equals 80. Okay, very cool. So there we have it, just like that. We are making sure shuffle is false. We are creating a DS list. We are giving it some values between 0 and 51, inclusive of 0 and 51. We are shuffling that deck. That's the actual part that does all the work right here. Number 9. Then here, all of this is pretty much just creating the cards and giving them the value as stored in this DS list. So it's actually very, very simple. Okay. So now, um, that's just the create. So when the game starts, it's going to shuffle at once. That's all it's going to do. But because we've got this shuffle button, which in the step it has, you know, when our mouse is colliding with 
this button, then uh, we can shuffle. So that means we need to have a step event here that's going to handle the shuffling when the mouse is on it. Drag in some code. Make this bigger, of course. And here we're going to say, well, if global.shuffle is true, firstly I want to change global.shuffle to false, because we don't want this thing shuffling forever without stopping. We only want it to shuffle, you know, when we've told it to. Then we need to destroy all the cards, right? So I'm going to use a with here, and I'm going to say, with what? Object card. We're going to destroy all the cards because we are going to be replacing them and they'll have different values. Just like that. Then, you guessed it, we can go back to the create event over here. We can copy, ooh, sorry, not the create event. What are we doing here? Not this. This is wrong. <laughs> Oops, uh, this is actually supposed to go... Yes, in the shuffle button. No, what am I doing? I'm such a fool. This is supposed to go in the controller, which randomly closed itself. I don't know, I can't remember. In the controller, we add that step event. So we go over here. Yes, that's good. This was supposed to have that. Let's just close everything, make sure our stuff is correct. So cards should just have the create, yes. Shuffle should just have placement code and when it should shuffle. That is great. Let's go back to controller. So yeah, the controller should have if global shuffle equals true, global shuffle equals false, and then with object card we're going to destroy all the cards. Then we're going to go to our create event and I'm going to copy everything from line 28 all the way up to 9. Shuffle and placement. Place it right in here at line 10. We have to fix some indentation with tab. But that's no problem. So, just as before, it's going to shuffle the list. Remember that DS list still contains all those integers from 0 to 51 inclusive, right over here. So, it's just shuffling what they are now, it's changing them to something else. And then, it's going to place all the cards back down as if it was the first time this ever happened. So, let's go OK. Let's go OK. Let's go to our room. This is what it looks like. You go to objects, put in button shuffle, this will place it in the middle. So don't have to worry too much about that placement. Also, object controller, just put it somewhere in the room, doesn't really matter. So here in the screen box over here, this is where it's gonna place the cards thirteen across and four down. So say okay, we're gonna save our project and we're gonna test this out. So as we can see the cards are shuffling randomly, which means that something's telling global or shuffle to be true at all times. So we need to make sure that isn't happening. So let's go back into here. Let's look around. Nope, not there. If position meeting. Oh, this is supposed to be false. Object button, shuffle, step, right over there. Line 10 is supposed to be false. If the mouse is not on it, it should not shuffle. Okay, that should fix the problem. There we go. So, <laughs> you didn't even notice it, but it shuffled everything first. Otherwise, we would start with the Ace of Clubs. Otherwise, the Ace of Clubs would be right over here. See, Ace of Clubs, Two of Clubs, Three of Clubs, etc. That's how it would be if it wasn't shuffled. So, yeah, it shuffled on Create. We didn't even notice it. So, for all we know, this is uh, how it's been given. And if I put my mouse on Shuffle, bam, shuffling them. Take it off, and there we go. Stop shuffling, and that's the hand we've been dealt. Oh, look at all these cards. All random and all different. So as you can see, DSList makes it so much easier than using for loops and stuff like that to, you know, ultimately set all these cards to a random one. So yeah, DSLists really make our lives a lot easier. So if you found this tutorial both educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more very best game maker tutorials. If you like this tutorial and many of my other tutorials and would like to become an official name sponsor of this channel, you can check out my Patreon campaign. Links are in the description as well as on the screen. Um, you can also find the project download right in the description. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot of comments to these lines so you can see how they work. If you have any questions on how you can implement this concept into your game of, of sorts, just you know, say something in the comments. I can get back to you and you know, maybe we can work something out. 
You can also follow me on various social media platforms. Links are all in the description. Coming up next time, I'm going to be covering helicopter mechanics. So that includes taking off and landing, flying around, shooting, all that kind of stuff. If that interests you in any way, stay tuned. It's going to be a great series. So until then, happy coding, and I'll see you guys next time for another great gaming tutorial.